And we're live. Ah, we're live. Welcome to episode two, everybody. Scrapcha, brought to you by Jim Trishan. And we're delighted to announce that we're sponsored now by IrishFighting.com and Fusco's of Meat Street. So, exciting times. Uh, mm. We're joined tonight. I'm really excited about this and I've been excited all week by Mr. Matt Burke. How's it going? What's the crack? The best part of a woman's body, apparently. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a fuck, that's a great start, isn't it? Ah, sets the tone, you know what I mean? Uh, Matt. Now, we have a whole list that we could go through, but why not introduce us up there for, for the viewers? Uh, Matt Bork, as you said, from the Dublin A area, up the Libos. Yeah, the Liberties. Up the Libos. Uh, I'm working out in the National Rehabilitation Hospital. I'm part of the Brain Energy Program. Um, I'm out there the last seven, eight years, uh, delivering cognitive rehabilitation therapy. And that's why you helped me to come here to talk today about brain injury yeah scrap chat we basically uh we're a combat sports we basically like to talk bollocks but we cover combat sports um and considering your role and considering the involvement of trauma to the brain in combat sports who better than a guest than to have in on yourself to give your thoughts opinions we and don't facts. talk bollocks shane we talk very educational uh, educated bollocks yeah educated bo there you go yeah, yeah well then i'll blend in so <laughs> 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 yeah, um, i've got a degree in bollocksology looking at your cv here though well, I'm acting like I have a CV. Yeah. Um, but it's like, about it's about size that'll fit in that page. Yeah. It's a little one. <laughs> you've basically you do cognitive rehabilitation as you just said, um, but you've also done sports science, you're a personal trainer, you had nutrition, sports psychology. Is there anything you don't do? Uh no, I'll give out and a go. Uh it's it's always been a mantra of mine. If anyone asks me, can I do something? Oh yeah, yeah, I I can do that. I'll give that a go. <laughs> uh, and I'll 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 fake it till I make it. Now you have so much stuff here that I wanna know what are you making up for? what's the lack what am i compensating for yeah probably the fact that i'm a ginger ki ginger kid <laughs> i'll never get rid of that i used to be an altar boy for sure look that's that's another show but, um, <laughs> what's happening kevin what's been going on oh yeah just uh all right enough, yeah so kevin, kevin has a rant be prepared yeah, kevin had a bit of a, an issue today so i've been talking about this bottle of whiskey for about two or three weeks um, I actually got one for a mate of mine for his birthday and I hadn't got, hadn't got the sample so I was like fuck it I'll, I'll buy one for myself because we're going away tomorrow for the weekend so basically Parson Motel fucked up and they, they the bottle got seized by customs so grand I contacted customs contacted friends and fucking the customs blah 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 no, nothing was helping then I eventually got an email from Parson Motel and they're like oh yeah it's been seized by customs contact this email address and i was like oh jesus contact the email your man come back to me and goes um yeah send me the invoice blah 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 sent it on he's like oh yeah we're not going to charge you for anything but you have to go and make your way over the fingless and i don't drive right. so so after we done the we had a busy day both of us uh, after doing the interviews earlier the yeah. rounding, i had to make my way over to fucking fingless i think a four bleeding buses and fucking i'm putting a swear jar in here ah it's fucking from the liberties we are course up the libos i really uh, am he but, like, uh, i'd make loads of money but the, the thing is i got the bottle and um it was like i was clutching onto a newborn baby walking home with it because i was like if i drop this all the effort has been for nothing in fairness it was one of the coolest looking whiskey bottles i've ever seen monkey yeah. shoulder have you ever monkey seen shoulder. it no, pull, pull up the bottle there let my see what it's like i'm not, it's, a, uh, I'm not a connoisseur of whiskey my little brother is whiskey mad uh yeah, me I, and Karen had a couple of chats. Yeah. Of, had a couple of chats about actually whiskey. And he we was had a. Uh, he was doing MC mm. for the the Valentine's ball for the hospital only there a couple of weeks ago when Kieran came along so you're an MC as well as a jack of all these other trades that was another thing I was asked to do MC for the ball that's and that again, air, man. look see the bottle with the three little monkeys on the side savage and savage. you know the the reason for that is because the lads who used to make the barley and the whiskey back in the day they used to get a, a, a shoulder injury from storing the barley too much you used to get monkey shoulder don't know what monkey but monkey shoulder used to call it well you got you got your whiskey in anyway I got me whiskey and yes, Shane, I had planned to bring it up to for us to sample it, and I forgot it. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. That's I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, so as I was saying to Kieran, he got himself absolutely hammered. But anyway, he was savage crack. <laughs> he was so funny. He was brilliant. But I've seen firsthand what whiskey does to you, and it's probably the reason why I don't go near it. Yeah, oh, I was I was out, um, not last weekend, the week before, and I was drinking Red Breast. I think I, I spoke about it on the last episode, but mm. I got that. jacket? Yeah, I, no. I, I got that drunk that I, I, I left my jacket in the, the cloakroom how I, I i did that like how do i leave to to head home in irish weather and forget my jacket that's normal <laughs> that's i've done i've lost so many jackets over the years thank god See, I, I, pennies. I, I used to i used to work in a nightclub so i used to when, when people didn't come back from half a few weeks 
I'm not gonna lie, I have a number of jackets uh, still have from from back in the day. So that just boy. sums you up. I'm oh, sorry. Had, I've done door work for years, and a lot of my family <laughs> are going around with jackets that were left behind. The mates of uh, uh, North Face. And yeah, people just super yeah, I guess that jackets. brand is popular at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, at uh, Ireland's last man standing, mm. uh, the boxing uh, tournament that was on in the national stadium, and it was live on TG Forder. Um, Jack Cullen, a yeah. boxer from Bullen, uh, Bullen, Bolton. Yeah. Cullen, Bullen, Bolton. Jack Cullen from Bolton had uh, the North Face logo tattooed on his back. No. He's not yeah. sponsored by them, was he? <laughs> He'd want to be. He'd want to have some reason for having it's that. just the whole, like, the MMA, the lad, like, Marius uh, Pudzianowski with the ta ta the No, but this, this wasn't, like, like a, 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 like, a sponsorship where you just got a like vinyl done and this was an actual tattoo an Jeez. actual oh like um who was it done it Bri was it brian caraway that did it with bad boy oh no justin gagey has the bad boy eyes on his ribs you know that don't you i do he, now yeah he does yeah. james Irvin, sandman had that tattooed on his forearm as well i think really because yeah because yeah, I, I looked up someone was like oh do you know your man has the bad boy it's like what and i looked it up and he did it. he has the bad boy eyes tattoos on his ribs here craig, on, on Co his craig coakley also has that does he yeah um, a lot of people seem to like that image but Matt you host your own podcast well gee, Magic Minds it's in the infancy it's in the uh, it's 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 in the creation I'm like Noah's Ark I'm trying to build it at the moment it's uh, <laughs> it's it's an idea it's uh, I've done four or five interviews at the moment yeah. so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build me interviews I got speaking to a lad from the IDAD in Dunleary the Art and Design College I dad yeah hi dad hi dad and he just says to me go out and do a load of interviews like maybe five to ten build up a, an ammunition like of, a portfolio so yeah, to speak and then you can bang them out each week uh whilst filming more yeah and and that was that that suited me because i i what i don't know about computers you could fill a warehouse so i'm trying to do that and then also build up my computer knowledge you know learn how to knock the computer on learn how to open it <laughs> <laughs> work on the crane f i r l m and like i haven't a scooby do about computers like i know more about calculators and they don't do internet you know so it's i'm i'm borrowing this and i'm borrowing that and i'm asking people this like me mate noel was over last night his company rooney graphics he's do uh shout out to rooney graphics yeah amazing company he's helped me all the way through my college posters yeah. and you know all that kind of so he's brilliant so he's helped me the website you guys are going to give me a dig out with the did sound he go to and, IT which did he go to it no 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 he just worked with a company and he's there with them donkey's years yeah. like, he's there since we're about 16 and he's like my go-to guy for posters and internet stuff so any chance i get one even when i get my podcast going we shout out the Rooney Graphics, yeah. they're, they're a deadly company. And your podcast is called Magic Minds. Magic Minds, Magic Minds. E is going to be the website. It's just basically, I just, I love telling stories. I love sitting down with people, old lads, young lads, people that just, just, I don't even care if it's true. What about true. women? Do women fit in there anywhere? Anyone, anyone. Because in this day and age, if you are one bit sexist, God help you. Anyone, like, I just, I love stories. I don't even care if it's the truth or not. Like, I was chatting to a lad today in the hospital. I have an opportunity to sit down with some amazing people. And this lad was telling me about an angel, a black angel at the end of his bed. He was talking to me about priest masturbating. And he was talking about him being a miracle. Like, what an amazing... Yeah, well, we're all miracles at the end of the you day. You are yeah. definitely a miracle, Kev. You yeah, are yeah. definitely a miracle. Absolutely. But I mean, it's that kind of stuff. And that, and that, like me and you were talking the other night about real conversation. You said to me the art of real conversation. And that, that has stuck with me. Because since doing this, and I know we're only a few episodes in, but sitting down and actually conversing with people, like picking up their body language, uh, getting their expressions, ju and just, as you call it, having a real conversation, you learn so much more. Oh, look, like I'd say that conversation with lads, it was an hour and a fellow was there for hours and it was just, it was rich. He was sound, he was honest, it was authentic. It was just, just proper conversation, yeah. an amazing story. And his outlook on life is unbelievable. This man is 72, he's paralyzed from the waist down. He's talking about his beautiful, girl that he met at 58 you know and he gave me some amazing advice of life just just the way he just practiced and he's just carefree the first thing he said to me today was i says how's it going what's the crack he goes i'm fucking flying and i says yeah <laughs> yeah not really i says yeah yeah paralyzed in the waist down and he goes oh, i'm fucking doing great and i was like yeah look at and then we sat down and talked it was unbelievable i'm trying to capture that in interviews like whether it's him whether it's you know authors whether it's people in mental health and just anyone that has a good story or just bringing knowledge i just want to 
you know, like what you guys are doing here, just bringing uh, information about something that you're passionate about. And I'm passionate about just storytelling and, and inspiration and motivation as well. And real conversation. And real conversation. I've, I was fortunate enough, um, you sent me some of your episodes, one of them being the one with Frankie Gaffney. And then the other one was uh, a guy who'd had a stroke but writes poetry. Mm. That was super inspiring. Yeah. Like this, um, uh, when they do come out, um, it was a guy, his name has... Uh, his name is Derek Cummins. Uh, he had a brain injury uh, in 2013. You know, he developed through his brain injury had what's known as aphasia. It's a it's a, an, a language deficit. You know, communication deficit, yeah. expressive and comprehensive. And he lost the art of talking and understanding. And you know, and just a small piece of the interview, his brother, his brother-in-law gave him an empty book, like an empty copy. And he was like, "What the hell did you give me that for?" But he went back to writing poetry, writing stories, and just an amazing story but like he hasn't changed he's the same person you can see the passion in his eyes his drive he's the uh, it's unreal and just to sit down and spend an hour or two with him like we've been in contact before and after that and just he's an incredible human being there was there was two things that really jumped out with me uh, about that interview one of them was um for a man who suffered the the um misfortune of, of going through what he has mm. um he, he he didn't sit around he not only did he go out and act, uh, like become active in raising money for charity, he was raising money for another charity yeah. associated with an illness that was nothing to do with him. Yeah, it's just and a lot over, of work for, uh, for the Crumlin Hospital, you know, and they yeah. do cycles. And I tell you how good he is at selling. We met a couple of times because he's got, he had a brain injury, he's got the aphasia. We got to meet a few times okay. and went through and it was a structured, you know, make it really structured. It wasn't as off the, off the cuff as the other stuff with Frankie and that. So we met a few times and then on the tour time, the second time I met him, he gave me a jersey. He goes, I have a present for you. But he wasn't giving me the jersey as a present. He was he was basically saying, you got to come on the cycle. With me. Yeah, so, he roped so he, you he in. He was roping me in. Do you know what I mean? So Actually, during me the episode, present. he roped you into handing out flyers as well. Yeah, oh no, he stuck a posters in the hospital and all. From but he, I think it was 13 years, 14 years, he was raising uh, money. And they raised i think they're touching on one million now yeah they're up to nearly a million nine hundred thousand one thousand million yeah. uh euro towards a charity that isn't the illness he's affected by mm. and this is a man who who like has struggles that most able-bodied able-minded people don't have but he's out there um not being defined by his illness and raising money for us so i think that's to comprehend that like and and even on that matt like do you, do you see that a lot because that kind of sounds like um like he has this issue now with the brain and is he trying to keep it moving in the sense that he's trying to keep himself busy and like you, like how, how how would you kind of interpret that from from your side looking at him working with him uh he's he, he's just being himself yeah. yeah he's just being himself like i mean i look i mean he tells his story about when he worked for uh when he worked for cuisine de france yeah and he talks about how he is now there's no different mm. like he was he was driven yeah. he was motivated he was a seller he was a magpie as we talk about he was go 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 he was walking pushing and moving and shaking he was doing stuff he's doing the same thing now he's yeah. just doing it just somewhere different yeah i get you this yeah. is him this is his his body and spirit this is what he does and he's just being himself and he you know it, there's no different i mean he tells his story you can see it because he's still the same person and, and from and from that kind of um perspective do you see it on the other side do you see issues where people kind of change is there an issue with that what do you mean sorry? so if you have kind of issues with the brain or whatever do you see the personality changes or does that does that happen because i i'm not an expert on it so no, i don't no, know well, i wouldn't why. have i wouldn't have seen the beforehand but the family would have reported yeah, yeah oh yeah yeah. Like, yeah oh yeah there's like if we wanted to talk about the brains later on we'll get into that yeah absolutely does changes you know yeah. a brain in, a brain injury changes not only the anatomical but also the the chemical balance because the the reason i'm so bringing things change up, the reason i'm bringing up is because me and shane were talking there before about a, an actual mma fire that um gary goodridge's name is now there was a documentary made called the hurt business and they were going through a lot of fighters and they were talking to a lot of fighters but gary actually was in this study um that i think they tested something like was it ten thousand fighters or something along those lines something some big number of fighters okay. to see the effects of fighting and he's kind of the bad result of how he fought and stuff like that because he, he it's a completely different man you can see that but he put up a post the other day which was kind of um it was you could see it was he was putting his heart into it because he was apologizing for the acts that he had done when he was having the issues so he must have been having a moment of clarity at that time 
posted it oh, up okay, and he actually okay. put a picture of himself up and you can see he put up two pictures he was and emotional one was, in it, wasn't yeah he? and one of the pictures was him and his prime when he was fighting and stuff like that and then him now and you can see it in in you can always see it in the he eyes basically of said something along the lines of i'm i'm sorry for what i have done or things i have done yeah. like this isn't me it's not fully me it was it was it was basically he was alluding to the fact that he's done some strange or abnormal yeah. stuff since he's had his brain injury and he suffers with dementia so that, yeah, that, that's it, what it's terrible sad that he has to apologize you know or feels he has yeah. to you know what i mean yeah do you know but that's one of the things sorry and i'm cutting across you there no. but that's one of the things on your podcast was um ocean not the, the guy you were just talking about sorry uh derek derek was he was saying even when he was talking about ordering a, uh, a bottle of heineken and he and he had to basically tell the barman look I, i'm not drunk I, i'm not dosing here i have an injury hey, like and having to basically give apologize me, give, give me a minute i'm having i'm having a few issues here having difficulty here and you can see it in his eyes like he, he's got angry eyes when he says when he tells your story you're like oh i get it you know but that's but like but that's the poor barman like the barman as well he doesn't know he he does I, when i worked in a pub i've had people come up and you're only given a few seconds to make a judgment, you know. Yeah, you yeah can't blame no, them either. I'm exactly the yeah, same. You're the same you, you, you've seen it. I've seen but it a number sure of times. We've barman, all been ignorant in some ways. Yeah, but the barman knew. I'm sure he went. Ah, oh, look, you know, he uh, he makes it quick. But I, I, we definitely will will go into Gary Goodridge. Yeah. Um, but I just want to finish up the point I was saying um, with Derek was one of the things was was raising money and being unbelievably selfless for a man with a condition that he has. But the second one was his writing and his work that he was creating was and this hit me because he was basically saying in case i have another stroke or i have something worse happen he was leaving in his works his writing something he could then go back to and say this is who i was this is what to wake up every day with that thought in your head mm. to think something's gonna happen i need to leave a structure or or something to remind or bring my sense of self back to me and to still be motivated enough to go motivated enough to get out and, and live life Mm. yeah like when we have able body able mind people who people take it for granted as well you know it's just he was he was an unbelievably motivated man and i think for what you're doing and and the the concept and what you're creating with your magic minds podcast that's what drew me to having you on here today you know thanks even even bringing a bit of a lighthearted part of it do you remember that movie um with adam sandler and drew barrymore she had brain damage but what he did 54 states 54 states yeah Yeah. i I I didn't want to say the name because i wasn't sure yeah yeah Yeah. and that's what he did for her i've seen that like i've had a lad uh, when i first started working there as when i was a student when i went back to college i was there i went to the hospital as a a volunteer designing a program for for people with disabilities to participate in health but i had this guy and he got a episodal memory loss yeah so we remember the family remember the wife but he didn't remember everything that happened day to day so every yeah, time yeah. i met him he used to introduce me who he was what he had what was wrong with him why he couldn't do exercise and i wasn't familiar with brain injury at all i was like i was just like ah this would be just great crack we go out and we'll do a bit of exercise and it, ju- it just even then that just blew me away like he told me the same thing over and over yeah. and over again and he didn't bat an eyelid it was like something from a film it, it, i'll never forget it just yeah, when you're talking about Derek writing down I was kind of like Jay, that, that is that like that movie that Adam Sandler yeah, at the end of like it was like this is your family this is us and we're on a was he on a boat at the end of it or something like that uh, every sure. time she got up she was on the, she had a video to play and then she'd come out on a boat it was it was kind of a, it was it's good crazy, ending, but, like. but, but comprehend that even <clears> for a second like you're writing stuff to leave a log basically for yourself yeah to try to remind yourself and remind others of who you actually are in case you have another stroke which you know, you know loses more brain power or you know, or whatever mm. happens to the brain when that happens that is like to face that every day like and to still this man writes poetry he's unbelievably articulate that is like just it's 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 quite remarkable you you, you feel very grateful i don't sound all america i'm so grateful but it's just you really are grateful to spend some time with people to let you into life like the work that he put into that interview he pages all over the table he was said that we had a structure and you know i was trying to be, be let it flow but then be mindful and giving him a space and yeah yeah and like the he done really well it was brilliant brilliant and he, he he wasn't so sure after the interview but then when i sent it on to him and he had a list of it he was actually pleased and i was delighted because he really did a great job and it came across i thought it was deadly like i'm gonna be biased and i'm gonna pour it out and i love it <laughs> yeah it's no, my, I, I it's genuinely, my story I, yeah be biased better on world yeah like okay. no I, I don't care mm. if people i don't give a rat's if people don't like it i'm gonna just there's a liberties thing i've ever yeah, heard of yeah. you know, I, I, don't I don't give a rat don't, don't, I, don't, I loved i love spending time with them and if people get at him from it, like the poetry, like <clears> I, he inspired me to write poetry. 
I see slags that we're like two miserable posts. We write just when we're miserable and we're down. I don't write any funny stuff. I, I, I write poetry as well now and again. And the same thing, I write about misery. Yeah, like, so I, 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 I I'd this, love to be a funny one. I have a term I use for it and it's called a, a melancholy, melancholy cunt. Oh, Jesus. You know, it's just, it, I don't know what it is about And you're the talking about me, course? Uh, about, about that, uh, that's a term. But, that's a uh, term, is it? That's your term. It's, it's a term I, 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 I paraphrase for myself. And anyway, I call myself a melancholy cunt. But no, I, I just think Magic Minds and, and that kind of conversation is something that needs to be out there more. You know, it, it's very easy to get trapped behind the social media and, you know, the life you're supposed to live or the path you're supposed yeah. to walk, the outfit you're supposed to live, the body you're supposed to have. We're getting away from real conversation. We're getting away from interaction and social interaction, our interpersonal skills and the actual idea behind what we are as humans. Mm. We're, we're social creatures, but not behind a, a screen where we're robots. Yeah, me and you were talking about that uh, the other day and I was saying that now, like, I go on and off. The, the, I start using my phone a lot sometimes and I stop for a while. But I get the whole social media headache and I did be tell, like I tell Shane, when I go home now, I turn both, I have two bleeding phones. I turn them both in airplane mode and I just watch a show or something. Sounds a bit and on the just, side, you know. What? <laughs> Sounds a bit on the side. Ah, yeah. yeah. Two phones, rug <laughs> daily. Yeah. Yeah. From the liberties, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but um, that, that's what I do now because you can, it, your brain gets scrambled from the yeah. amount of information that's coming at you and you're like, oh, let's calm down. Let's put pour a whiskey, put the phone away and relax. Mm. Yeah, I think that that's what's going to be me. Uh, well, not too much. I'm not going to become a complete libo head. <laughs> Matt, we can see um, you brought us your pet brain. Yeah. Talk to me about this and, and, and what exactly we're going to discuss now with this. So, right. <clears throat> so, you you know, the whole reason you asked me to come along was to talk to you about brain injury in sport. And uh, so, uh, nothing better. I, I'm a visual learner and I, I want people to see, you know, parts that would be impacted. Yeah. I'm just going to so, move it there. So. But definitely want to say. Beside Fedor, who probably actually has some brain yeah. damage. So definitely want to say, look, I'm not, I'm not knocking uh, boxing. You know, this is purely objective. So yep. I'm not beating boxing. Excuse no, the like, pun. Li listen, martial arts, combat sports is, is 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 my passion, is my love. It's something that I feel like helped change my yeah. life for the better. I know Kevin the, feels the, the same. The exact same. Like yeah. if, yeah. we if, were saying at the round and earlier, we were talking about it. We know what we're getting into. Like yeah. when you're younger fighting wise you'll do for the fun of it but after a couple more years you're kind of going right will i stay at this a few more years and take a few more digs and it's it's life you you, you know exactly what you're getting into like it's but, it's you're making you're signing your own waiver in your mind at the end of the absolutely. day absolutely we choose our own poison we were only talking about this the other yeah. night you know what, I mean? <laughs> but what i was going to say was if if i thought you were here to to knock uh combat sports to you know, like just be derogatory towards combat sports for just the sake of it i, I wouldn't have you on the show you know what no, i mean yeah. what i think is you can't and i said this to you and i said it to you kevin you can't change the sport i don't think no you can, you can change the, you, you can change the information given to fighters given to amateur fighters professional fighters like we had ronan on today um ronan fought around the world fought, very good interview actually fought a lot of times and he said it himself in the interview he just didn't know Mm, they, yeah, they, they yeah. didn't know and a lot of people it's not that they're ignorant it's not that, that they don't care there's there's been a whole change brought about in irish mma and irish combat sports um but it's still trying to get the right information out there mm. it's it's about it's education like absolutely education, and, education, and education and that's why really right, i want to have that conversation but right across the right across the board like i mean like, as you read out my qualifications there like i started up personal training on the sports science blah, blah blah i went right across the field any athlete should be educating in all of it like you know <coughs> yeah. Pick, yeah like really devote yourself to educate but not just for your own benefit for your own health you know well that's that's it even even when you i don't know about shane but when, when i first first start first first start fighting when we were younger like um like our instructor like this is like this is my club where i used to train like and he would we would train like nut jobs like to be 40 people up here training and the sparring would be hard sparring like if you're up here knocking the bollocks out of each other but with the, the nutrition type of thing like i specifically remember a few years ago um going for a fight and i had to lose a bit of weight and i was like yeah just start eating a few bananas and this that the other and i was like 
that's not really what I I don't really know and I looked into myself and wow. I start realizing about nutrition because that's the old generation of like it does not you can't hold yeah. it against them like it's 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 the old generation of well, the old fight hard train the clubs hard as well that's you know it like, at the end of the day and you like I went I, I've done coaching across the board like I've done some GAA done some soccer I went up to strength conditioning as a strength condition coach up to Rialto one yeah. time and I've never coached more dedicated disciplined sound kids as boxing kids yeah Yeah. like i've done uh ga and i've done soccer and their mentality is totally different i'm not knocking the other two guys but if you said to a boxing kid jump on one leg do the hokey pokey you'll do great he do for you did he turn about (laughs) (laughs) but i mean like i've never seen it just like when i'm doing soccer stuff it was all about winning and getting to a league and you know yeah. the Premier League. These kids just love boxing. Their right. attitude was tremendous. And I went away thinking, Wow, they're great kids to coach. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's what like even Because you've done sports psychology as well, haven't you? So we've well, done part of it, you know, like as well, like they've done course in the job, which is it's you know, it's, it's some psychology, some counselling, just part of just proper communication, you yeah. know. It's about working people, social intelligence, you know, there's mm. it's you know but even on the on the whole kind of psychology of uh with the boxers and stuff and how dedicated they are and you were saying even we were talking about when we first start training and how dedicated you are shame was ta- i think in the last episode you're talking about when you kind of started jiu-jitsu you taught jiu-jitsu was the whole eddie bravo style rubber planet, guard yeah. when i when i first started training like people would know where i would be at a certain time because i was so that i was so into training i'd be up training six seven days a week i was so mad into it and i genuinely think like it's benefited me in the okay. long run so forget about the damage or whatever there, see that piece there absolutely brilliant socially emotionally physically all that kind of stuff and you can't take away that's objective therapeutic that is amazing but it comes with then the dangers it does do, do you know what i mean does, and, and people like, then go like smoking you know i mean smoke's really bad for you you know what i mean but it does all these other things for you you know like even when you come up early i was up here doing a training talk session to before, me like you know just what I mean? let, 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 let's get into the nitty-gritty here talk okay. talk to me about just um the effects of constant or okay hits on the head now and again or constant what happens to the brain when impact happens okay so what happened the brain injury like a traumatic brain injury or a brain injury whatever you want to call it is anything that physically or anatomically changes the brain or is a chemical imbalance that is a brain injury so if it's so a traumatic brain injury is a knock a punch a fall uh, a violent shake mm-hmm. or it can be an acquired brain injury would be you know a hypoxic injury you know a virus a toxin uh any kind of you know so like stroke an aneurysm so any of those there can cause a brain injury so where boxing or sports or impact they would be the traumatic now there's levels there's mild and the severe Mm. so you're talking about mild very mild but they all still fall under the same umbrella there's still a head injury like so we have the we have the brain here my pet brain as you say okay so the brain consists of it's like a it's how would you how would you describe it it's hold. it's like a it's like a you know like it's a, heavy in there you know like yeah. a, you know like a kerry gold yeah a semi-soft kerry gold yeah so it have the same texture in a hard casing so you're thinking let's give an analogy it'd be like a can of tomatoes in a tin right? okay okay so that's your head so you think somebody punching you tap 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 and it shakes because inside the brain there's it's it's in a, it's, it's a badly designed piece of work anyway whoever designed it whether it was god or Allah or any of them boys keep that over here because i don't want you to get too far with me mike yeah okay so it's a bad design and it's 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 a tomato in a can so you get a punch whether it's the temporal the frontal lobe the ocular any part does a shake there's yeah. a bang so you you imagine there's little micro bruisings c- c- concussions or whatever you want to call them they're still head injuries they're still yeah. they're still changing the the structure whether that be physically or chemically, they have a knock-on effect. Yeah, okay. There will be, like, if you get a couple of punches in the head, you know, now, but if you do that repeatedly, like a box or like a footballer, he's going to have repetitive strains in his knees, his hip, you know. Same as well, from ankle. head in the ball. 
yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was saying. Kevin brilliant. Doyle, the other Kevin Doyle, had to retire because of heading the ball so much. He was having issues with his he brain. That's what he said. So it goes to show that across the board, but so like you say, like a boxer predominantly, his hands are going to be sore, his his shoulders going to be sore, but so is his brain. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just it's like you mean see lads after fighting a face and salt swelling their hands. The stuff you don't see is is the noggin. But what I used to what I when I used to fight, I used, like Fusco used to have us fighting probably. Put the bag on let's right. say. Mm-hmm. Eight times within six months, you'd have you'd have fights there because be like there be so many shows on whatever. But I used to get that fuzziness, a real weird. I never, I never, I could never put my finger on it. And it, it like, because I remember Deco saying on one of the podcasts, "Fighting with your face." I used to do that, mm. and I remember being in school and months before, I'd be like, "Ah, oh, doing this, this test or whatever." Oh, it's grand. But when I was in school, then after the let's say a, a good year of fighting, I couldn't pull words out of my brain. I, I was kind of going to myself in class going, what is that word? I can see it, mm-hmm. but I can't like uh, articulate. So that's articulate like it. what I told you, that guy Derek with the, the aphasia. Yeah. So that is like a, a word finding and understanding cat instead of dog or tomato or seeing something green and thinking it's an apple, but it's not. You know, it does, there's all those, like, and that's depending on where where you might be been hit. Yeah. Mostly yeah. that time or it doesn't even have to be that time. It'd be a, cum- a cumulative effect of other times. Yeah. With, with the, the can of tomatoes, because um, I just want to get this across. Yeah. That's a great analogy. With, with the can of tomatoes, right? You're talking about all these taps or all these tap. bangs. So mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily even have to dent the can. doesn't have to have. No. So no. the outside well, of the can still looks oh, absolutely perfect. normal, but and inside everything is getting yeah, mushed. And the, 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 the way it's shaped there and around it is the, is the, the skull. And that then in itself has ridges pointy ridges mm. so it's in a pointy it's in a hard shell with pointy ridges so when it goes back or sides it can bang off these pointy ridges so they in themselves can do damage on the inside yeah so we're gonna we're taking a, an example here uh two guys in a fight mm-hmm. um i was gonna get dylan white's recent knockout brought up but um okay. a guy gets hit with a big hook mm. right the okay. brain shakes or the head shakes side to side yeah Guy gets knocked out on the punch. Okay. The body then falls. Mm-hmm. Head then smacks off the canvas. Mm. What happens to the brain from that punch to that guy then coming back to there's, uh, there's about consciousness? One, two, three, four. There's about five impacts on the brain. So when he hits him as one, the brain moving with inside the skull is two or is another two. So that's three. Hitting the ground, another two. So you're talking five, six, boom, 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 boom. I mean, if you do any physics, you know, acceleration yeah. by force, yeah. the distance he falls, the hooks, if you've done that and, and multiplied the newtons or whatever way you want to measure it in But there's that, that saying, like, uh, every force is an equal and opposite yeah. reaction, so. So you do all the, the force, like, his brain or head, head, mm. whatever, is, is, is that they're receiving a lot of newtons and force. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. But boxing he fell there's cameras around there's canvas there's gloves it, 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 it takes away it takes away the there, rawness yeah. of it yeah. but let's let's put it down to pure bait he's just had a, a huge impact to the head mm. yeah like that um that happened to me in a fight uh, a few years ago and it was you were knocked unconscious yeah it wasn't unconscious it was more of because i've had a few fights where i've been hurt and i've made my own decision from feeling going fuck this i'm stopping the fight and um, so basically i was fighting and i got a punch basically it was about here i got the shot i think it was and that was when i went down and then i got a kick in the back of the head but when i got back up the me, me corner mama going are you okay to continue and i goes listen i'm seeing five of you at the moment is he, i'm not wow. fighting you got hit in the back of the head didn't you i got directly in the back of the head and it's it's so yeah that's where you're you're and, equitable lobe so that's vision and then you have your cerebellum underneath so that's the balance coordination so the two of them together See, i hadn't got a clue why that was because they were asking yeah, okay to continue and i was like i want to but i'm it's still not i'm not a pro fighter i'm not jumping in there to make money i'm like i had to go work on monday like it's only fucking fight at the end of the day but the one thing i wanted to bring up about it was for that fight mm. i'd actually cut about 10 kilo in a week so i'd done the the bad way of cutting the water and to be honest with you, I used to, I take a lot better shots than 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 what I've been hit like like you your man now. severely dehydrated. There's a, there's that's a, what I was asking. There was like, a whole, is there actually a whole damage with the whole? Like I know the water comes off the brain. And that, I, I don't I, like I can answer. I don't even think it takes Matt's expertise. Mm. To, like you, not only had you severely dehydrated your body, but you your brain would have been lack of water there as well. Yeah. Like you're always on. You're on the back foot. Yeah. You know what I mean. You're depleted. 
in the the basic like at a cellular level you're not up you're not the, the no, to be honest, if I take a no, fight, yeah, if I yeah. do a fight again, I'll never be cutting weight like that again. I'll deal with the good way. I'll drop the weight like straight, gradually, like, like straight away. Before, like I mean, your body takes up twenty percent of your oxygen, takes up but that's why when huge I asked, amount. I, of your I was nutrition. asking you. I was wondering because I don't know where the section is of brains, but I remember when I was standing up and one, Chris actually asked me during. It's like, yo, you want to? Can you fight, man? And I was like, listen, Chris, I'm seeing five of you, so no. Yeah. No. So, yeah, Whatever so the, it was, it's for. So like, the back is the yeah, octave lobe, and that looks after kind of vision. Yeah. Under here, it, it, now near the back of the neck, is your cerebellum. So that looks like the that works on the the motor function, fine motor skills, moving balance. Uh, around and the, even around on the that front like, here, this is your. This is like this is like the CEO. This looks after everything. This is the the planning, organization. Uh, initiation behaviors does, yeah. it's 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 like it's like the wife of the brain <laughs> it's the most important part is your personality <laughs> is here around the side we have the temporal lobe root temporal that you'll hear people like the lot on today some memory loss yes. yeah uh just behind that then you have the parietal lobe that's like spatial awareness mm. uh your perception on things perception on people someone says something to you you know what's he saying to me and we have damage around here like you don't you know someone says a joke and you're like oh, is he winding me up or something again these are these are deficits that you can have initially or residual deficits but down the road talking about like you know a, a knockout or, or heavy trauma to the mm, brain mm. what happens like obviously the brain is a, like i would kind of look at it as or if i could use an analogy i know you're a fan of analogies, no you, analogies. Know, you, you, you know when you hold the power button on a, on a computer and you turn it off without shutting it down they say that's really bad you're going to damage the insides because you're not shutting off all the parts i would imagine going to sleep right so the brain is just gradually shutting down and then it, and then it knocks off or whatever happens getting knocked out is like that instant turn off everything hasn't shut down properly what happens to the brain when it's been knocked out and and you get a concussion or a heavy concussion or a traumatic brain injury as you call it recovery wise or just even prognosis for that injury or diagnosis of that injury what exactly happens you can't say because you don't know the specific impact where it happened what happened like you mean it's the most important organ in the body it's yeah. it's the mothership mm. it's the ceo it's 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 the brain it's the computer it's up there it's the it's nasa it's you it, you know what i mean it's every nothing will happen without this so it's a complex fold of 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 material so in there short circuit it could bang to the side bang to the left uh, wires trip switches yeah. it goes off to, just to give you an analogy yeah, yeah it just switches off like i mean you might not see on a ct scan or an, an mri where there was damage because it might not show up but that doesn't mean you don't have a brain injury yeah because it could be a chemical imbalance mm. that could be you know breaking the words that you might see that, that's just, a, i was literally just like, thinking I've that worked the brain people. is a let like there's a let oh, uh, electric stuff going through and that stuff can just be, yeah it can just be don't. shut off and one little bit and that can affect it now can that ripple so you can you can have one let's say light switches off in 10 million lights can that cause more Absolutely. switches uh, off it, it, what it do it's a it, it's like a degradation so, i mean like that can that can it can it happen like that uh, yeah it'll, it'll, it's a cascade of yeah. problems like you know again i've worked with people that have had brain injuries but nothing has come up on the scan and their employer would say but he's scan cleared and he's grand and i'm not like i work with them at a functional level and that's why you do the the actual test the, the face no, we, to face we test. see the we see the functional so so if i'm not neurologically trained, i've got one there uh, scheduled on that as well and yeah, yeah <laughs> i'll do some cognitive assessment so we get people sent in by consultants or doctors and we have a, a, an amazing uh, neuro team neuro rehabilitation team in a hospital yeah. so they come in from the main hospital or from in other hospitals so they've already been diagnosed they've already had the scans all that stuff so we work with them at a functional level we look at you know we'll do some cognitive assessments we'll ask the question we'll make the observations and then we'll look at them at a functional level to see what's going on irrelevant to what the scan says irrelevant to what people say like their family is a great indication you observing somebody making a cup of tea or attempting to make a cup of tea yeah. like i've seen people that come in and said yeah i'm sound and grand everything's brilliant and they couldn't make a cup of tea but you know what i would kind of uh does that strike you does that's, that, yeah, no, yeah that's, but that, that's i was making gonna a cup of tea is simple i was just gonna so say so many different stages knock the kettle on take the cup out of press get yourself a spoon put the tea bag in the cup put the water on pick it up 
There's so many sequence of events there. You go, but if we do that, like, that's easy. Yeah, but not if you have executive function skills. If you had to get in the front of your head, banged or knocked or something, and you, you've lost that ability. But it mightn't come up on the scan or it mightn't come up on so the... something as simple and as... And that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. It's really weird the way you say that. Um, in IT, computer science, whatever, you do uh, bug testing. So, like, I used to work for a company do software development, blah, blah, blah. And we get bugs in from customers. And there'd be some of them, like... I don't know, the computer would shut down because of whatever, let's say that, okay? And there'd be 20 steps the customer would give us and we'd have to reproduce it. And the way you're talking there, those steps, you could do it 10 times and you might not notice, but you have to keep doing them and keep going through those steps a little bit out of the box, a little bit out of the box to mm. find where the issue is. Mm. And that's, it. Lit the way you're talking about that, it literally just sounds like a computer. It, it is. That's it's, our it's, program. It's like, so, it, that's but some of the so cool the way so we're explaining subtle. it. Some of the stuff is so subtle, you just can't put your hand on it. Like, 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 you like just, it's it's mad it's, because it's nearly uh, innate. You just it's you know when you see someone walking down the road and you instantly cop that they've a limp. Yeah. yeah, you don't know why, and you just know that it's just it's in us. It's humans. We we we, we information process. We see things that we see something slightly not right there. Yeah, it's yeah. a primal thing. I mean, you see that with brain in the family. Just can't put the hand on it. Just, but he's grand and he, Larry sounds great and all's going well. But just, just there's something, something off. There's just something there, yeah. and he, and it's that something that just can't get him to go back to work. It's that something that can't get him to drive his car again. It's that something. But he sounds and he looks and he's brilliant, Larry. You should have seen him two months ago. He's in a wheelchair, but he looks and great. But just something there, and it's that and that you can't sometimes. Put that, your hand that's on. what was crazy. Like the way you were talking that's about what that. The, that's the the thing about brain injury. It's a silent disability and. It, it's so difficult for these people it's so so difficult because if you're in a wheelchair or you have your leg hanging off you get the sympathy of the world and you get attention and people to help you we're brain injured people just don't know and if you sound and look the same man you're just you in must, the rat yeah, race with the yeah, race you must be all right, like yeah. I, I, I would class myself on brain injuries as a silly billy that's being honest i, yeah, I, I was I, a silly billy look i just i wouldn't i wouldn't that's why it's, it's great having someone like yourself but i did a, a small bit of research like and one of the things that I, I learned was, especially with the brain, most of the diagnosis like are like going off of behavioral changes or if it's a more severe brain injury, then you, you, you know. But mm. mo most of the time you can't see until the person is dead and the, like the autopsy has been done and you can see the degeneration in the brain then. And so, that's what happened with the, the NFL players in America. They couldn't test them until they were dead and now they're starting to develop it. Did they want to test them? Like, yeah, now, like, have you this seen Concussion, This is a hot topic. Uh, this is have a you hot seen take. Concussion, the movie? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen the I movie. I thought it was very good. Actually. Yeah, it's very good. And the doctor figured out the test for when they die. And basically, the, the, the NFL never wanted it. But what Matt's making out there is like, did they want to do it because the amount of money that they had to pay out? Like, be like, uh, yeah, you don't see it till there's a traumatic pain injury because it's a blind spot for family it's a blind spot for boxers yeah. it's 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 put up it's put as something else you know it's like oh i'm just not great i'm not feeling great myself today oh yeah jeez you've changed your mood has changed it's, and the sad thing about with, it is we we, we 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 come up with strategies to compromise or to to compensate deficits that we yeah. have but the know, person experiencing it usually doesn't know either no no absolutely not it's it's just again it's a huge piece that we work with people in the job is building insight and awareness yeah yeah so like insight and awareness is is it's nearly the it's the, it's the starting point for brain injury or cognitive rehabilitation how can you work with somebody if they don't have the insight and awareness to say that they have a problem I'll give you a point another analogy an analogy of somebody going on x factor and getting up and seeing your man saying get off you're rubbish like they didn't have the insight and awareness to know their shit because their family didn't tell them yeah they didn't have a, a, a coach to say look you can't sing no insight no awareness yeah. and that's when people you say to people look larry but my mother always told me i could sing yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just because you are pretty uh, <laughs> and, and and thanks man and people don't know that i mean you say larry you've got a memory problem or larry you've got information processing difficulties and you go no i don't and i go but you do and then when you come on the program uh we will do stuff with them you know education process training functional stuff and then only through repetitive constant consistent feedback then they will develop the, they'll get that aha moment and then that's probably true you know neuroplasticity and they develop like yeah like there won't be any regeneration of dendroids and in the brain that doesn't happen as a young unless you're young but as, a, as an adult it's just consistent 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 and that's feedback. what i wanted to bring up i was saying to you earlier about um i literally seen this today there's this mobile barber that goes around did i send it to you no. this mobile barber that goes around and he just cuts dementia patients hair and what he does is he brings a jukebox with him 
he I saw this somewhere though. It's it was all on, on Facebook social media yesterday. It was on RTE, yeah. and he he basically brings a jukebox around, plays that, and cuts the lads' hair and has a chat with them, and the music playing, and it's just talking to them like a normal person. Like these lads are in their sixties, seventies, eighties. And even he was showing a couple of lads, he had a couple of recordings, like your man would finish his is getting his beard done and your man just goes, Yeah, he's done good looking, haven't he? And your man's like, Yeah, you are. But it's really? it's it's what he's doing is what you're saying, he's he's going through that, he's he's working with him to kind of get his brain firing and seeing where the issue it's it was so cool to see like yeah, yeah, man was Lenny White, it. I think his name was. I really wanna I want anybody watching this, I want them to learn something. I want I I really wanna raise awareness. Um Obviously, you're not going to advise combat sports as a lifestyle choice, being in the job that you are and the injuries that you have seen. See, this but is, is can can you stop? So if you stop, say if you get some concussions or you get really bad knockout and you're in your 20s, mm -hmm. can you, if you retire, like say if you take Ronan as the example, okay. he, he retired when he was 30, I think it was, he said, because of the symptoms he had. Okay. Is that brain injury degenerative in a sense that it's no matter what that's there and it's gonna keep like getting worse, or will the 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 stopping and no more contact help the brain and kind of repair in in any sort of way? Are you, are you okay? So I'm trying to guess what you're trying. To I suppose say. what I'm trying to like say is brain it's not going to reverse it's, itself. It's not, not, not reverse itself. It's not going to infect the next area and then it's not going to have it. Is that what you mean? That's going to no. But what I mean is if 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 you stop. Okay. If, if say we're, I'm 28. Okay. If, if yeah, I, no, I get what you mean. If I stop now, is my brain okay? If I've received, or like I've had concussions, if if I've had like serious amount of knockouts and I've I've been concussed, lot, something's not just gonna jump out of the bush and go, ha ha! I was waiting here for you. I could or couldn't, and that's just life. That you know, it's like cancer. You know, you can take all the preventive measures, and then all of a sudden, boom, you can get testicular cancer or uh, obviously a cancer it could just yeah. happen, and you didn't smoke. It can happen. I mean, if you if you're a boxer, and that happened to you, I would if it was me, I would be going down my way to really mind myself. I yeah. would be going down my way because like the the the, the like what Floyd Mayweather does essentially, he like, protects himself all he, the time. Unbelievable, like at a cellular level, mm. like the cause of all problems, a punch in the head, a bang from, is an inflammatory yeah. process. So yeah. when you get a hit and the trouble that happens in the brain, it's inflammatory. So from your life, from now to whenever you die. You would want to be practicing anti-inflammatory processes wherever that is for you that's what you do that's what you seem it, to hear from a lot of doctors about everything has to you have to stop the inflammation everything anything the keto bad, diet has inflammation and stuff like that in <laughs> the body any problem any like you know illnesses whether it's metabolic uh, syndrome or it's depression all these things at a site level at a cellular level there's an inflammation process yeah so you've got knocks in the head you've had concussions so just think there's inflammation there how to reduce those inflammation how do how do i create an environment in my body that protects me from the inside out yeah, yeah i get you how do we how do we do that at a cellular level anything promoting and promoting uh reducing oxidation at, at a cellular level uh and then what foods do i take what practices do i do you know all this kind of stuff and that will not only physiologically help you but you psychologically then will think you know what I'm putting a few quid out my health pension here. Yeah. Right, so you. if I'm if Does I'm that make you warm I'm gonna, and fuzzy? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a, an example. Oh, oh, and and I want yeah, no, because like, I, I genuinely want people to learn because there's like there's a, a mixed martial arts combat sports as a whole is just the most ground, fastest ground sport in the and world. This really is not is. just your brain. Like this is like inflammatory in your hands, Everything. your knees, anything. Get into that if, practice for recovery. If Joe Bloggs, right, <laughs> is is a kid who's now uh become a martial artist is going to start fighting and it's going to have a serious career for the next 30 years yeah. what do you what advice do you give him or propose to him for optimal brain function and safety like so what should he do or what step so i mean if he's in a fight and he gets he gets knocked out how long should he take off what is he doing in his life to promote and and, and as you said reduce inflammatory um stuff what what do you propose to try to ensure health in the brain and optimal brain function within a combat sports environment uh, it's 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 these skills are transferable right across any sport do 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 what the other champions are doing not okay. just in boxing do what they're doing in golf do what they're doing create is good behavior what is golf a sport <laughs> <laughs> do you know do right across do what the champions of life are doing 
practice good behaviors you know break it down into all the components that will make you a champion yeah break it down and go from the from the, from the li my list of priorities when you start anything you do you know breeding you know start off manage your breeding practice your mm. proper breeding there's a great book by patrick Keown. it's called the oxygen advantage yeah and that's all about nose breeding uh not because as human beings we've developed just m mouth breeding <gasps> But so that's, that's what we would teach in martial arts when you're fighting and stuff like even if you're in the third round of the heavy thing get that even yeah, if you're covering yeah. up taking shots that was scary absolutely yeah, 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 you're, you're a beast terrified. you're a beast <laughs> yeah look i mean but Fuck that off. even being proficient with oxygen right yeah. that at a cellular level that's that's the you're get. filling the gas tank that, at the end like, of the day the proper balance of ph with your carbon dioxide nitrogen oxygen mm. where when you do it through the mouth you've lost a lot of it so yeah. that comes up managing that stuff then you're talking about as we said you're doing all the free stuff sleep and getting your sleep down mm. like i mean for, that's one thing i have to work on for brain health like brain health you know two days of sleep deprivation huge problems mentally and cognitively like all of all of like if we'll talk in a sec about the, the what each so each part does two days of sleep deprivation not sleeping properly you see yourself at a functional level you're just not right yeah you know so that kind of stuff uh where would we go for then? You're like in the, in the sleep, and you're talking about like practicing meditation, practicing like mindfulness, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff together. I think there's one. Um, is is these things gonna re recoup the brain or rehab the brain, like so to speak? Like is is uh, meditation lights up parts of the brain? It's been shown, and you you've shown like like scans under like when meditating and not meditation it lights mm. up like a christmas tree parts of the amygdala and other parts of the brain true meditation from the breathing like a huge marker for health is blood pressure yeah meditation reduces blood pressure well that's what um the instructor in here used to do at the end of class so what he used to do is finish class at nine o'clock whatever and lie on the floor and he would just speak like quiet monotone he'd be like relax the feet relax the knees relax the hips mm. and five six minutes maybe and you'd sit up and he'd, he'd tell you just to kind of sit up and cross the legs and just kind of keep yourself and even though let's say you were killing each other for two hours and you're sweating blah, blah those five or six Slows minutes the mind down. it was mad, like again the old guys still know a lot and i don't see other clubs doing a lot of those things mm -hmm. and he still does it like after a hard session if even if i'm up here on my own i'll lie down mm. i'll make sure nothing's gonna annoy me no phones are on and i'll just switch the lights off and i'll lie for five six minutes relax and everything and you feel this refreshment even though your body's wrecked yeah, but your yeah. mind it, it just calms you right down you feel that refreshment yeah you do feel uh you feel this refreshment uh yeah so it's, it's, it's like breathing sleeping uh environment yeah like getting your environment down reducing your stresses your stresses not even reduce the stress being mindful of how to manage them yeah. overthinking monkey brain learn proper mental health tricks that you can use these are like get into good routines in the morning you know do what the champions are doing you know start your day take off. no shortcuts basically yeah exactly like, and it, it does a whole like this it does not like the red pill this and the blue pill does that get into brilliant solid behaviors consistent for 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 the the brain like you know if we if we sprain an ankle if we twist the knee you know ice we heat things we can take medications if you do get knocked out or you do have a hard sparring session and you have that sparring headache where your brain is just pounding what what are some of the things you can do for the brain or for your head like other than look take again, a pain I, i'm i'm not a, a dietitian and i'm not uh, you know a, a biochemist so I'm, I'm not recommend anyone doing it but i mean do your research look at it, educate yourself but the stuff that i would do if it was me it'd be first and foremost is nutrition yeah is your macronutrients on point you know your carbs fats protein it's what you put into your body at the end of the day protein being the main one you know everything everything at a That's biological what child was talking about when you mm. first everything your diet. everything you, you you do at a chemical or a biochemical level is an amino acid mm. so your protein if you want anything to repair inflammation is repair and you know reconstruct so protein levels make sure your macronutrients should then then you have your micronutrients you know make sure your 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 fats are in there make sure you're you're taking your fish oils or if you're a plant-based person you're getting your omegas into your walnuts these kind of stuff all anti-inflammatory foods yeah. yeah anything you know your your folates uh fish oils 
Uh, hu- like when you've had an injury, there's going to be depletion, and magnesium is a huge one. Yeah. Uh, magnesium citrate, not so much oxide. Oxide is Zinc. cheap. Zinc is a huge one. Great for flu. That's and what I um function. I read. It was it was really weird. Someone was talking to me about the keto diet. And they were the same Kevin's favourite diet. Yeah, you heard Kevin mention keto and, um, at least 10 times an episode. But they were talking about a magnesium deficiency and they were talking about you get cramps. Mm. And we were having an episode last week and I started getting leg cramps and I never get leg cramps. Mm. And I, I, I looked into it and I was like, that's where I get it because I, I didn't have enough ma- magnesium in my diet. I'm like, it's, yeah, it's man, meant to listen the, to this stuff. Yeah. It's all mag- like connecting it's to- everything. It's a type of magnesium that you take in, but you can take a lot in through your mm. diet. But if you've had a brain injury and if you're on medication for brain injury related or medication for something else, you will be deficient in lots of minerals and yeah. vitamins. And yeah. So yeah. I mean, so there's, there's the fish oils, there's magnesiums, there's the folates. And you've got to be careful then eat, people eat a lot of greens because there's a lot of sulfur and they can cause a reaction and you see people getting bell stuff. And plus one in four people have a, a mutation called the MTHR and they can't... Uh, metabolize for folate. idiots and silly billies like me mthr is it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a mutation gene it's the mother for something it's a long it's a long uh name i'll put it if you have a link we all you can put yeah. it in the information mthr gene it's it people can't metabolize folate and that in itself then raises homeocysteine that's something levels. you haven't heard because normally people are are just saying greens are the best thing ever oh they are and absolutely but then at a cellular level people might have a gene that can't metabolize you know mm. when you get a like a b complex like the b12s it's best to get it with a methylated group because it's already the process of start and if you have if you have the gene you won't you you won't be able to metabolize and that means homeos- your body can't process it and then homeocysteine levels raise up because you can't metabolize it and that in itself, homeocysteine levels is a huge marker for inflammation. Mm. And doctors and hospitals, they don't test that. If you have a sound doctor and you really look after, you're into your health, go get your homeocysteine levels done. Yeah. Not the stuff that the doctor. And that's, again, that's another thing for people in, 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 in sports is get good panels done. Get your endocrine I've system. Never got a panel at. done ever. Get get your get your bloods, get your 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 your, your, your test levels, uh, blood panels, all that. Like proper ones. I really and get a sound doctor that knows his shit. <laughs> you know, just, like, just like for the every, everyday Joe, because um, I find what you're saying is fascinating. But uh, for me as well, I'm not really processing what you're saying because I genuinely some of the words you're saying, I, I, I really don't understand. Okay, sorry. So far, no, no, you're not, it's not, it's not you. It's not nothing you're doing. Um, but I just, I just want to simplify it. Um, for any viewers out there who are probably listening to you and go, get a panel donor. Uh, homeocysteine it's like just what exactly is that like so homeocysteine that so controls homeos, homeocysteine level is a marker it's an inflammatory marker in your body yeah. yeah so if you've got high levels of homeocysteine so i think it ranges from four to twelve that's a range that you want to keep you in yeah so if you're up and above the range it means that there's an inflammation a high inflammation in your body somewhere in around. and inflammation is essentially damage inflammation is is the cause of arthrosclerosis yeah. they blame it on cholesterol but if you didn't have cholesterol if you didn't have inflammation you wouldn't have cholesterol sticking to the walls you wouldn't have arthrosclerosis hardening of the arteries yeah. so inflammation caused the crime but the cholesterol got the blame for it yeah i get you so yeah. if you have a cut in your hand inflammation comes along it gets sticky the plaque comes over it cures it same on the inside yeah i get you yeah. and it's, that happens with the brain when the brain gets right. injured you think of any inflammatory response in the body that's what happens yeah perfect cool um another, another question I, I really want to ask you as well is obviously with combat sports one of the biggest parts of it is as kevin alluded to earlier on um is cutting weight yeah mm-hmm. and i just want to ask your just your i suppose your opinion and your thoughts on dehydrating the body so severely that you do see the way people do look what happens to the brain during dehydration? Same thing that happens to every other organ. It doesn't function at an optimal level. It just yeah. doesn't. It, 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 there's no different. There's no getting away from it. It takes up a huge amount of nutrition. It takes up a huge amount of oxygen. So a blind man, the flying horse, would say that that's going to have problems. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, what bo- blind man on the flying horse? <laughs> what boxer goes to bed, cutting away, sleeps properly? What boxer goes? No, you don't. Fight. You don't. What you boxer goes most through? Of the night I don't know this. Like. I've not worked. I've done a little bit of work. We've done that, that session. Done it, but I've never worked in a camp, and I'm fascinated with. Surely, there's problems at home. Surely, there's sleep problems. Like, 
at a functional yeah. level. Surely she, sounds like she's going through a hard time. Oh, I'd say like, it's I'd say it's difficult. So you know yourself the answer to that question. Yeah, yeah. Like really, like like you, if you think about it, and you, you think about it objectively and not emotionally because you love boxing. If you look her from an outside in, you go, man, that's not good. Yeah. So yeah. you're putting cool. yourself to the and ringer. While, while we're on the, the just the subject of the brain as well, like just uh, there was an absolutely kind of heartbreaking thing that happened in Irish uh, mixed martial arts and uh, the scene at the moment. And I hope Kim won't mind me bringing up, but basically, Kim Hogan, who was an OSKA champion, he w- he was someone who was heavily involved in in the toy scene and it was transitioning into mixed martial arts. And this is the great thing about what happened with safe MMA and the yeah. brain scans. So basically. Mixed martial arts, amateur and professional have mandatory brain scans. Mm-hmm. Keen went for his mandatory brain scan and has had to retire now because of the results that came back. And basically wow. what happened was uh, they found a 4.7 centimeter, and I really hope came on mine, but uh, for educational purposes, I hope you want. Okay. 4.7 centimeter cyst in his brain. Mm. Um, that, that. That's yeah, unbelievable, makes it? it really real because he goes into a fight, maybe gets I- impacted on his brain. That brain, or oh, that cyst could, you know, explode or whatever could happen but one of the things that kind of hit me with it was like the cyst you know makes it real but blood vessels can just as easily burst on impact you can have have an aneurysm you know clots anything will happen you don't have to be in boxing you can be walking down the street and just drop dead like like life Life happens Uh, yeah i mean cycling has a huge like injury brain injury impact like that's need a highest uh cycling yeah i've but, actually heard that yeah, yeah you know yeah. they're huge like we've had tons of people in us uh that have been falling off bikes horses horse riding horse riding's a huge one amateur one is huge but polo just, is that a, like i've i've read about polo that's water polo. <laughs> yeah like you get a lot of because of the hammers flying up and down does that ever I've never no, i've never <laughs> had patience what i was just what i was trying to say about uh, can i just want to go back on absolutely the, uh, mm. about the panels and all and where I was going with that was when you have a brain injury, okay, and we talked kind of earlier about a cascade. So when you have a chemical, you know, a brain injury and a chemical imbalance, that then has an impact on the, the neurotransmitters. That then has an impact on the, the endocrine system, the nerves, the hormones, like whether that's tests, thyroid function. So they all have a, you know what I mean? An domino impact. effect. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You know, and they affect mood, they affect uh, motivation, they affect everything. So what I say is to get the whole work done so you have a, a picture of the bloods, yeah. whether from your hormone levels, from your toilet, all right the way across, and then you sit down and then you can see under the hood of the car, even if there's no damage there, you can look at your, your test levels, you can look at your estrogen levels because from a brain injury these are impact there's a great there's a guy called jay campbell he yeah. has a he's called the trt guy and he had a guy on that had a brain injury and he had a he's, he's done test replacement therapy and all that but he went and got bloods and all and it was just a fascinating uh, interview but it was brilliant and he went through it all as well himself he got the bloods done and he went back to his doctor they weren't they weren't very proactive because his test levels were low his eastern levels were low yeah. his mood was was under the under the was was under the right under the levels and it impact them and brain injury can do that brain like that can happen to you without uh, a brain injury but when you get the bloods you can have a look at it yeah yeah because yeah, you yeah, get yeah. A, a map basically yeah yeah you just see it. yeah yeah, yeah. There's, there's no guessing going on but you have to have a proactive doctor you have to have a sound doctor most doctors <laughs> up here just say do your cholesterol but they're all check about 90 B- as well check like. your bmi oh yeah grand yeah yeah oh yeah sound ha- have some antidepressants go on down the road your grand yeah like <clears throat> all, all these things and, and you said do the free things you know yeah. um and one of the things that i wanted to bring up and, and discuss and i know i mentioned to you off so uh, you don't have to go too in depth into it but like nootropics and all these new things with shiny labels and the pictures and their athletes are sponsoring by them and they're just everywhere like all these things and, and you said it perfectly to me like you know are all the other ducks in order you know for for, for these things to work like nootropics you know, for, for, for optimal brain function and, and, and brain health and just health, you're basically promoting that it's a lifestyle. Absolutely. It's right across. Mind, body and soul. It don't sound all new age and hippie about it, but it's, it's all them. Like, things don't work in isolation. Anthony Joshua didn't become the world heavy champion by just doing boxing. But you, just, you've worked with these patients. You, you see this on a daily basis. People don't. Yeah, I, I do, but they don't practice it. People don't do it. it, it they, they don't. They just want the red pill, the blue pill. I'm not saying about the people I work with, but human beings, yeah. mm. they want the easy thing. They don't want to could be this could be they don't want a problem solved they, you know people want to just the easy option life is difficult enough for them but i mean 
delegate get somebody in your corner that that can help you get somebody like if people are interested if people i'm a, I'm, I'm a huge interest in and I'm, I'm a nerd for it yeah people want to chat to me get in contact i'll gladly give people a dig out uh well this is one of the things them, and help them sight through stuff like this there's so much and there's so many simple things to do as well because you're you're usually interested in in getting more involved with the the martial arts and combat scene so I'd can like you to. just can you just uh let us know your twitter handle is uh it's uh at Z Banda. Is it? It's <laughs> yeah. Magic Minds Podcast now. But no, I don't it's Magic Minds. I haven't changed me Twitter. I don't have to do that. Oh, See, I'll show you don't worry, um, man. Thanks, Kev. I'll be because a tech I, know, guy. I know you're interested you can, in it. You can get me at uh ma at magicminds.ie you can send me an email. And yeah, because sure. I know and it as well, you're looking to have some fighters on, on your podcast as well. Definitely, definitely. Um but yeah, if there's anybody out there who's interested in speaking to Matt, get on his Twitter, go on the email. Let address. me give you a dig out. Let me try cipher through because there's so many snake sellers or snake oil sellers out there promoting bullshit. Do you know what I mean? You know, it, yeah, it can be a bit And Matt'll give it to you straight as well. <laughs> you, you know, you can it can be a little bit difficult to cipher through and people only want to take what they want down. Yeah. But bang everything you do, you want to do bang for book. Yeah. And that's another thing you say, what do athletes do? Look at your training. Look at your sleeping. Are you are you training more than you should be resting? Yeah. Like, well, there's so much research out there now that says you don't have to train that much. Yeah. You, like I've 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 watched that. These now they're not training as much the pros. Yeah. Like the, I've gone from doing maybe two and a half hours training to less than an hour now, and it it benefits me more. Like it's, yeah. Like it, there's tons of research out there to say that you know we're not designed to train that long. Back the inflammation. Yep. As soon as we do long runs, long whatever. Boom! Inflammation yeah. kicks in. We're sore. That's an indicator to say, "Kill your jets, lady." Well, this this <laughs> has definitely been educational for me. Get back to, do you yeah, want to talk a little deadly. bit deadly. about the neurotropic tropics? Neurotropics, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's there's a uh, they're individual uh, neurotropics, uh, psychotic uh, drugs, all that. They, they're individual. And they don't they don't work for everyone. They do for other people. They, will they go across the blood brain barrier? Will they not? You know, there's all there's, there's so many. Yeah. But as we said, you have to have all your ducks in a row. Like that when you were saying alpha brain and it has like I looked and I was saying to you I knew you fell down the rabbit hole of research and all the stuff that's in I went, Hold on a second. Will this work for you if you're cutting weight? Your missus is giving you an awful time, your job is driving you bonkers. Will this blue pill, red pill, will that yeah. show a significant change for seventy quid a month? Yeah, a, it is a bit expensive oh, yeah. as well. Like. Do you know what I mean? And I looked at some of the ingredients. Some of them promote, you know, dopamine levels. Some of them look at B, B vitamins and the anti-inflammatories and the, the claw. And I'm not saying, I'm not knocking the product. Yeah, we're not dismissing. Absolutely. Alpha Brain is just because it's a popular one. But what Matt's basically saying is, what's the point in looking for a magical cure with nootropics when you're not sleeping correctly, when your yeah. diet is shit, yeah. when all these other steps that you could be doing, you're not. And then you'd go and buy Alpha Brain or any other nootropic, and you think, oh, this yeah. is going to be yeah, the cure. Exactly. Like, get back to get back to the stuff. Like, there's a product called NAC. It's called N-acetylcysteine. That's br- that works great at a cellular level. That reduces uh, free radicals oxidation at the uh, at a level. CoQ10. These are other products that are great that work at a cellular level. These have great research behind them. They're not expensive. <clears throat> you'll have them for a couple of months you don't have to take them long term yeah. you know we could par- part your arsenal but these are things that you can just bring in you don't have to invest too much money in there's a few other things out there like nootropics that are popular but you can cycle them in again yeah. for around sleeping yeah. you know like the likes of ga- uh, GABA uh, 5 HDP, melatonin stuff you can use but you don't have to go out and spend a fortune on them yeah. but don't expect like Miracles. You know, but, like Miracle if buying a red tin of paint to paint your wall it's not gonna go whoa that's red yeah. you know you won't see it but it's part of your, your tools so lifestyle change and, and and focus more on stopping inflammation in the body reducing inflammation at reducing level. stressors reducing all these, the, all these stress things. in itself is it, it causes inflammation that causes a uh, coronary heart it's one of the huge uh contributors to coronary heart disease mm. stress this, I, I genuinely Matt we could Artists do seven yeah, hours could, but yeah, I'm definitely, definitely I'm born gonna, in the years we're going to get no, you back on as well definitely going to have you uh, going to have you back on because can I just say I'm not trained as a nutritionist I'm not trained as a, an endocrinologist or thing. mine is all experiential learning yeah. uh, my own as you say in college and your where views I, are your own as you were saying yeah as own. I was saying it's self-directed learning I'm a, I'm a geek for reading books I'm a geek for reading uh, and talking to people and this and it's it's again i do some research but again you can do all this yourself yeah and the exactly. thing as well is I, I we're definitely going to have you back on because there's so much i want to pick your brain on but i understand learning and for processing this 
this is so difficult for people as well to take in so much but we definitely will have you back do you know we didn't do we probably maybe the next one is, is look if people boxers specifically want to identify problems they might be having regarding the brain yeah, yeah. that'd be great do you but know what i mean no, looking at looking at the parts of the brain that would say right this does that and they go oh wow because you know when you look and watch them you want to take snippets from things going yeah fact, that could be me or that could be so I hope we could educate you. Yeah, man, I'd love to come back. Definitely, no, you definitely will be back on. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks legends, much, legends. Good man. Thanks very much. Thank um, so this has been episode two. So shout out to Charles and Jim Trishan, uh, Irishfighting.com, Fusco's and Meat Street. I hope this has been highly informative for you because I've this, been stuck to listen to him yeah, this, this whole hour. This is, this is something, <laughs> as I said, is, is a huge part of martial arts and combat sports as a whole. But doesn't necessarily have the right information out there there's loads we didn't touch on in terms of mental health about all the other things that come along with brain injury um we just basically wanted to get a, a, an informative view out there so you could maybe pick some stuff up as matt said if you want to talk to him and he's looking matt to, might be a habitual guest yeah, listening to all this. matt's looking to get involved more in the combat sports and martial arts side of things so by all means uh drop matt a message definitely start working with him and as he said just take the chance like yeah. we, we, we've just, nothing, nothing to lose we'll have all his info on the, on, the, on, the, like on the video I've like 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 done a ref course like the see was like mm. on the other side of the line and it gives you a different perspective on yeah. things yeah. like oh you have an opinion of and I love it but I'm an armchair supporter wherever you want to call <laughs> yeah. it I just love it but I, I, I like to see it from the other side or, you know I, I love all this kind of health and for wherever wherever no. it is cool. once again man for myself thanks, sure. much, thanks a lot for having yeah. me I really appreciate it it's great work coming out of the liberties I'm really impressed thanks man Episode 2. Thank you very much, everybody.